You are such a genuine gem. Thank you for clicking on my video. I'm Brooke McKenna, but today's case is the case that created the Amber Alert, the Amber Hagerman disappearance. Now, the impact of this case would last for years and would change so many things in investigating in general, but let's not forget about the girl who started it all. The ones whose case is still unsolved and yet has slowly been forgotten. By the way, I post so much content like this. It's my passion to tell these stories, as you may know. But if you're new here, I would love if you would subscribe and just watch these videos to support because it truly means the world. Now let's get back to this story. So it was 1996 in Texas and the Hagerman family lived in Arlington. Now they had two children, a nine-year-old named Amber and a five-year-old named Ricky. But this case is about Amber and she was an honor student who participated in the Girl Scout. She also loved to ride her bike and just kind of seemed like a sassy older sister, just kind of a wonderful little girl to be around. On January 13th, however, Amber and her brother Ricky would get off the bus from school and it was pretty warm outside when they got home. And this was, of course, in January, so it was uncommon in Texas for it to be super warm. However, they were determined to play outside. They knew that they probably didn't have many chances that they were going to be able to ride their bikes that January and February, so they were going to do it that day. Now, the sun was shining, and they went home and asked their mother if they could ride bikes together. They often did this. They loved to do it together, especially. And their mother said yes, as long as they stayed close to home. Home. Excited, these two grabbed their bikes and headed out to an abandoned grocery store parking lot. And this was often a place where many neighborhood kids would go and ride their bikes. So it was kind of like a bike ramp in the parking lot because it was abandoned. There was nothing else there. So they often kids would go and play together, except for this wasn't close to their house at all. It was actually close to Ricky and Amber's grandparents' house. Ricky and Amber played for a while, but Ricky began to get nervous, not because it was getting dark outside, because the sun was still shining, but because they were so far from home and he knew that they were going to get in trouble if they were caught. So Ricky told Amber that they he wanted to go back and Amber basically told him that she wanted to still continue to ride her bike for a while. So Ricky decided to go back home on his own. Unfortunately, he didn't realize how this decision and the these last moments would affect him for many more years to come because not even an hour later, Amber would go missing. And the most baffling part about this case is that everybody knew it was an abduction because it had been witnessed. It was still broad daylight when a 78-year-old Jimmy Kevill was outside in his backyard doing some gardening and he was kind of lived nearby this abandoned grocery store and the park where they all played at and he heard a high-pitched scream so it kind of rounded his house to see what it was about what it was happening and that is when he noticed a dark or black truck kind of pull up to this area and a little girl being pulled off of her bicycle this girl screamed and was also kicking at this man but couldn't get away and ultimately this man shoved her in the cab of his truck and sped off now this happened so quickly that jimmy couldn't really do anything about it at the moment but he did immediately call the police knowing that this abduction had just been witnessed by him and they were gone. Amber Hagerman had been taken. Jimmy moved so quickly that they he contacted the police immediately and they got to the scene before the Hagerman's grandparents who lived nearby. You see, when Ricky had come home and Amber wasn't with him, their mother called her father, who would be their grandparents, to go and search the area to try to find Amber and bring her home. However, he was searching and not finding her anywhere, and that is when he came across the parking lot swarmed with red and blue lights. The police had gotten there before he even could. That's how quickly they were on it. I mean, more than 50 officers began looking for this girl at this area and they were finding nothing. Of course, this truck had sped away, but they weren't finding the truck anywhere. They were also looking for her abductor and Jimmy didn't have a 
very in detail description, but he did have something. He said that it was probably a medium build man who was either white or possibly Hispanic. Now that's all he knew, but it was something to go on. And I mean, the police got there in the span of minutes and they were searching for Amber. They were searching for this truck and yet they weren't finding anything because this truck could have gone anywhere. It could have literally driven in so many different directions and they had no idea which one to look in. Witnesses came forward saying that this description of this truck matched one that had been sitting outside of a laundry mat earlier that day. However, when more witnesses were questioned, they didn't know who was driving the truck and when they tried to find even more witnesses at from this laundry mat because it was a pretty popular place, they couldn't be found and Creep It Real podcast had kind of a theory that they had been kind of illegally in the country and that they were afraid of being deported so that's why they weren't coming forward. And there was even a reward put out that gave them money and said they would not be deported if they came forward with information. They just wanted to know anything that they knew. However, this didn't even bring anyone forward either, which if they were fearing being deported, I could see that they didn't even want to try to get this reward money or come forward if it meant that they could possibly be deported. Now, Amber's family and the police were doing everything that they could to search for her. I mean, they were so close to the answers and to catching this person, yet so far away. And that's when Amber's father contacted the parents of a missing girl who had disappeared three years prior. They contacted this family because they had done a wonderful job at getting information out about their daughter. And this was the case of Polly Class. If you want me to do a case on her or a video, on her case, I would love to because it is quite interesting as well. Four days later at the Forest Hill Apartments, a man was walking his dog when he came across a body in a creek. And this was just a few miles from where Amber had been abducted and this body was naked and besides one sock and had a deep gash in the throat that was almost to the point of decapitation. Now her body was quickly identified as Amber because of the school ID that they had to have where they gave their fingerprints. Now due to the autopsy, she was found that she was also beaten and sexually assaulted and she hadn't been killed right away either. It had actually been two days after her abduction that she had been killed and investigators also believed that she hadn't been dumped in the creek but possibly washed into it during a thunderstorm because none of the employees at this apartment had seen her until then. So many tips were coming in at this point and so many leads and yet nothing was actually happening in Amber's case and no answers were being found. I mean, they did believe that it was someone who lived in the area because they would have needed to keep her in the area for those two days while they were keeping her hostage before killing her and dumping her body, which was nearby. If her body was dumped elsewhere, that would make sense. Somebody drove out of town, you know, dumped her body in a different location. But to dump it so close to the site was just odd, meaning that they probably had somewhere nearby. Although if if Amber had been drugged or possibly sedated in any way, maybe this person was staying in a local hotel and kept her disposed of the body and then left, which is why no one has ever been found with the truck because the truck did eventually leave and the person wasn't in the area, which is why nobody had ever seen this truck before. Amber's case has never been solved. However, it has made a huge difference in how the missing person investigations are handled to this day. You see, Amber and Polly's parents worked together to get the People Against Sex Offenders petition out there, which eventually led to the Sex Offenders Registry being created, which is so huge where you can go and look to see, you know, if there's any sex offenders in your area. It makes such a huge difference and it really has impacted so much. But that's not the only thing that Amber's case affected greatly. You see, at the time of Amber's disappearance and her body being found, a mother named Diane Simone was kind of following her case and called into a radio station, kind of just asking a simple question. She had an idea from Amber's case that was definitely ahead of its time, but it was that if 
radio stations could broadcast the weather as it was happening, why couldn't they do the same for abducted children? People actually listened. It was a wonderful idea. And the, that same year, the Amber Alert system was rolled out in Amber's honor. And it was also standing for America's Missing Broadcast Emergency Response. So it kind of had a double meaning, which was absolutely perfect. The Amber Alert is basically a message that you can get as a text message and it's like a loud beeping sound as soon as you get it. And it will basically tell a description of a possible car or the abductor or the abductee and what to look for to hopefully catch this person before they can get away. So there are so many different eyes on this case rather than just being in the local area. Now this can be a text message, it can be on radio stations, news stations, cable shows, emails, basically everywhere nowadays to reach as many people as possible. Now in the United States, this is just for kids who are under 18 with a confirmed abduction, the risk of death, and also if they have information about the abductor. The mother who came up with this whole idea said the reason she did was because the problem wasn't that people didn't see them, it was that they didn't know what they were seeing. Now, a mural has been created in honor of Amber this year, actually, and it's where she disappeared, and it's of her face, a flower, and a butterfly. It's pink, and it's beautiful, and the artist said, maybe someone saw something back then, and knows something from back then, and maybe this will tug at their hearts to say something. Now, when reading about anything to do with Amber's family, how they were dealing with her murder, how they were dealing with the fact that it was helping so many others with this Amber Alert, it broke my heart. They are, seem like the sweetest people and Amber's father, when he was told that Amber's body has been found, he refused to believe it, saying that Amber would be home. And according to the Mysterious Circumstances podcast, Amber's mother has gone through a great deal of loss since Amber. I mean, it seems like everyone in her life has passed away tragically and she just feels as though she's basically like a voodoo doll and everything she loves will be taken from her and it's better if she just lives alone and is alone. And reading that actually brought me to the point of tears, so I'm going to stop there talking about it, but just know this was a great family and they did not deserve that, but no family of a missing or murdered child deserves that, so... But anyone with information about Amber's murder is asked to contact Detective Ben Lopez at 817-459-5373. And there's also a $10,000 reward for this information. So please, if you know any legitimate information, please come forward. Now, how could this person never be caught? You know, one theory I saw was possibly was it Jimmy? Maybe this whole story about the truck was a cover-up and maybe that's why she was never found and she was still in the area when she was disposed because it all happened right there and Jimmy said that to possibly cover his own tracks. However, he would have had to, you know, work really quickly to get that all done and call in this strange witness statement. But nobody else saw the truck, nobody else heard the screams that I could find, so it really was just on him. Although I couldn't see how the investigators wouldn't interrogate him or search his home as well. However, if they were more focused on finding this truck, maybe they didn't look into that at all. I mean, he is a 78-year-old man and I hate to blame it on someone who appeared to be very helpful in this case. I just like to look at the people who kind of flow under the radar because that could possibly be their what they were planning to do with this witness statement. Do you think it was someone who lived in the area or someone passing through? I mean, I'd love to know your thoughts. And I really do hope you learned something about Amber Alerts and the Sex Offender Registry. And I can go more into detail in the Poly Class case if you want me to do that as well. But don't ever forget to speak up. Your voice is powerful enough and I love you to absolute pieces. Okay, bye.